Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is part two of the LS truck intake shave. Uh, as you can see, this is kind of what you start off with. And I'm going to show you how to finish off with uh, something like this. So I actually managed to recover part of the first video, which shows me laying out the glass. So I'll include that first in this video and then get right back to where we left off. If you're enjoying this, please make sure to like the videos, and if you haven't, please consider subscribing. I appreciate it, and it really helps, so we'll go ahead and get right into it. It called for one minute stir on that. Stir it a little bit longer just because it's been sitting around for a while. Work it all the same direction as we can. Got a nice coat on all of that. That's gonna be the bottom. So we're gonna do the bottom side of the mat first. Start with just spreading some of this out somewhat evenly. I got a piece of plastic down on the table. This mat soaks up a lot of resin, so we may have to mix up some more resin if we do, that's fine. But you always want to pre-soak pre it before you put it on your workpiece. You always put a layer on the workpiece first. Then while that's kind of tacking, in essence, you come over to your cloth and you get your cloth ready. So now that we've got a good amount all over the cloth, now what we're gonna do is go back and dab it. We're gonna dab it like this and that pushes the resin through the cloth. If you see lighter spots, like white spots, that's an air bubble or mat that has not been soaked with resin. All right. Now we will lift this up. And place it. on the piece, okay. Come over just a smidge more. Okay, yeah, that's pretty good. Now we're going to switch gloves because I proceeded to get a, a lot on my hands here. Maybe in a second. Alright, so what I'm doing now is tapping it again. And that's getting all the air bubbles out. Most of them.
Okay, see that little white spot? This is a this is a big hole that we cut out, but that white spot right there is an air bubble. And when I go past it, see how it's disappearing? That's what you're looking for. You want to be able to see the black through this, so you got to go all the way around and look for those little air pockets. And what is going to be a challenge is to get this these corners to stick, so we might end up having to tape them down. Sometimes you have to work the air bubbles either out of the mat or over to a hole like this to get them out all the way. But you want to get all the air out of there because anywhere there's air, there's not surface contact, and that's what we need for this to bond. On edges, you may have to come in and snip it like I just did there and work the mat down because the mat sometimes doesn't like to bend. I'll probably end up coming back and cutting most of this off anyway, so it's okay if this doesn't stick that well on this curve, but at least we made an attempt. So now I'm gonna use a roller On these curves, some, some places it's not sticking very well. So what I'm going to do is we tape them. So even though that's going to create a little divot, I will be able to fill that easily. I would rather it stick good and deal with the divot than vice versa. So that's why I'm doing this. Okay, I just want to take you to take note. You can see that there's two lines, the outer line and then there's an inner line. On the second layer and subsequent layers, I trim it back to kind of stagger the edges and make it easier to feather out. So I'm going to cut out my template a little smaller and then cut out my chop strand mat and then we'll come back. All right, so I have everything laid out. I've got my chop strand pre-cut. Um, I've got it marked with the orientation and I'm going to write up. This is the top side. First thing you do is flip it over, and you're going to wet the bottom side, but before you do that, you're going to wet your substrate. So you're going to put a real thin layer on this. Get it all in the little nooks and the crannies and the little pinholes and got a little hole I gotta fill right there. I'm gonna try and fill it with a small piece. On the first coat, I mentioned that I went over it with a heat gun. That was because I was putting it on a bare plastic. I'm not, I did not go over it with a heat gun this time. Trying to make sure I get all those little pockets filled in as much as I can. Trying to keep this as thin as I can and go, trying to go in the same direction every stroke. 
take my little pieces. The longer you keep the epoxy in the cup, the quicker it sets. So you want to try and get it out of the cup pretty quickly. I've just laid it out. I'm going to start at the top. I try not to stroke too much because I don't want to get, I don't want to move epoxy around because I already have a good spread. See how it's white right there? Watch. Now it's black. That is what I'm talking about moving those air bubbles out. We'll let that sit for a few hours. If there's excess, you got to be careful about wiping it off if you use tape. Because if you wipe it over the tape, then you got even a harder time getting the tape off. So. Alrighty, it's about 5.30 the next morning. And I've got the tape off. And in a few hours, I'll come out here and start to sand it again. Um, it's, it's pretty hard now. But um, I think I'm still going to give it a few hours. Uh, if nothing else for me to wake up. And my tape job worked out well. Happy with that. Then we'll use short strand just to go over it, ferret out. Then I'll just use regular filler over top of that. And then we'll probably do a high build and make it real nice. So a lot of little steps, but the little steps make a big difference. I've got this intake sanded after the second layer of chop strand. And my little hole I had on the edge right here has it filled in nicely with that little piece of chop strand I put in there and then the overlap I did all the way around and I don't I don't need another layer actually it's very very strong so what I'm gonna do now is put a skim coat of short strand on it this is the bondo brand but i'm gonna skim coat all of this and then sand it all off now i'll record it but when i'm doing this the point here is to just get a thin even layer over everything not try to get everything at once because 95 percent of what we put on there is going to come off so Don't overwork it. With this stuff, you can tell when it's starting to harden because like right there, you'll see that the fibers start sticking together. They don't smooth over easily. So we're gonna let this cure, which won't take long. It's already starting to cure. 
and we'll be back. Now, if you have excess, you can use a cheese grater to clean up the excess. See, look, this is already, it's already setting up. This stuff goes quick. So I don't have a lot of excess, so I'm not going to use a cheese grater. What a cheese grater does is it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a cheese grater. And I can't find mine, but if you got high spots or excess material, you run it over it right about this, just after this tacky stage. You run the cheese grater over it and it takes off this Bondo glass in bigger chunks so it's easier to uh, remove material faster than just using sandpaper. So this is already hardening up. I can barely make a fingerprint and it's just tacky. So it goes real fast. If it's if you're a beginner, don't worry about trying to get the perfect amount. Just mix up a little bit more than you think you need. Most of the time you're going to end up with too much and some's going to go to waste. It's just a fact of life. Uh, once you put hardener in it, that's it. You're done. So you might as well just throw it away. These are called clean sheets. They're on Amazon. It's cheap. And what's nice about it, you ain't got to look around for cardboard or something to mix on. You just grab this sucker. It's got a space for your uh, paddle. When you're ready for a new sheet, you're done. Clean sheet. Hence the name, clean sheets. I'll put this in the in the link below. It takes a lot of time to be able to guesstimate how much filler and how much epoxy you need. So, uh, not too bad for the first time doing this in a couple years. So, we'll come back when I'm sanding it. You want to start sanding this stuff as soon as you can. So, as soon as you run your block over it and it's not sticking all up in your block, go ahead and start. It's sticking to it a little bit, but that's okay. It's better to get this done early. After a bunch of sanding, you can see what is left. This, the light spots, is the short strand Bondo glass that's left. So now I've got it pretty close to what I want to accomplish with the short strand. And remember, I, I'm not really concentrating really on getting it perfect with the short strand. I'm just filling in the big divots with the short strand because it's a stronger filler than just regular filler because it's obviously got the short strand glass in it. So now what I'm taking is guide coat. If you don't have guide coat, you can get some cheap dollar, the cheapest matte black spray paint you can find. Preferably like dollar store stuff. Um, and just lightly over spray it. But we're going to use guide coat <clears throat> since I have it. So we'll just put some guide coat on the piece. Now what you are going to do, take your sanding block and start to crisscross. And you're going to, you're watching to see how fast 
the black fades away and how even it fades away. Now, if you had a really dark, and it's a bit of an optical illusion because you've got much lighter filler. You've got glass mat and then filler patches. But if you saw a really dark place, that tells you that's a low spot because your sander is not, get, is not getting to it. So this area in here is lower than the rest of that corner, which is to be expected because I laid the mat up one out here, one in here. When I use regular filler, I'm going to coat the entire thing. And especially during that stage, you have to make sure you're crisscrossing and you're going the length of the whole piece. So. I'm going to use, I'm going to go ahead and sand this a little bit more crisscross and prep it for regular filler. So it's almost there. I, uh, I've gone in and got my little curves here pretty close. They still need to be dialed in, but I'm going to wait to do that at the next stage. After I sanded a bunch more, which you can tell the difference there's you should see even less of the real light spots where the short strand is i took a straight edge and basically found that there was a peak right about in here and it was high here and that's why you always go back and check and check and check sand and check and sand and check because if you notice, my block here is not quite as long as the piece that I'm trying to sand totally flat. So what was happening was when I'm crisscrossing down here, crisscrossing right here and coming up here, I'm kind of not focusing on the middle as much. So I got out my bigger block that will cover the entire piece and I really made sure to work the whole piece and I worked down that crown and it's now super straight all the way down the piece and it's going to give me a much better product. I'm trying Rage Ultra for the first time. Once again, we're not leaving it, forgetting it. We're standing right here waiting. If you glide your sanding block over it and you start to see the filler kind of roll and crumble type deal, more like they just kind of roll over, it's not ready yet. Now I can't, I, it's leaving a fingerprint, but it's still not ready yet. Just like that, it's starting to, it's still clogging it a little bit, but it, it's okay. Once you start sanding it and you see powder and not rolling filler, that's when you know you're good. You're at prime time. It starts to gum up on you a lot, which it will when you're trying to get ahead of the curve. Just watch your paper. Now this might be just a little bit early, but I'm saving a lot of work by doing this. What I'm doing right now is just getting it 
closer. We're not going for the final. Hi, 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 hi. Dark spots are lows. That's definitely a world. Okay, so now I've gone around the edges and I've cross blocked. And if you notice, I've got a low spot here and I also have a low spot here. So I need to add filler to those two areas. And I think that's really it. There might be a low area right there. It's hard to tell over the dark spots. Yeah, so I need to add some filler here and here and I think I'm not going to add it there, I don't think, but I will add it down here. We got our areas outlined and our surface prepped, so we're going to go ahead and uh, mix up some more filler and apply it. Alrighty, I got a, another coat of filler on here. I've just knocked off the top layer, roughed it in. It was still gumming up the paper a bit so you know I'm cleaning out as I go every couple of strokes and so now I'm gonna let this go ahead and finish up hardening and we'll come back out with our long block if you notice we have some small pinholes that we need to fill now when you're doing fiberglass work that that can happen often because of the mat that we're using try and blow those out but there's a product called glaze which a lot of people mix into their layers of filler um, I just forgot to do it so now what I'm gonna do is mix some of this up and go back and fill those pinholes now the glaze is extremely good at laying out and leveling so when you're mixing filler if you're having a hard time to getting getting it to lay out or it doesn't feel like it's easily spreadable you can add glaze to it mix it right in and then add the hardener like you normally would with a line going across halfway to two-thirds so they say or a little bit more if you <laughs> uh, accidentally put too much so i'm gonna go ahead and fill these pinholes with the glaze and keep moving. So this is two coats of high build. It's looking pretty good. 
Uh, I'm expecting to have to fix a few spots. Went ahead and did my outboard motor cow because it had a bunch, it had been dropped a few times and there was huge chips out of the top and <clears throat> it needed it a couple years ago. And I've just been putting it off, so figured I'd do them all at once. But yeah, the high build came out pretty good, I think. So we'll get to sanding. I found uh, some dirt spots, and of course they were on the front. <laughs> so I have to work them in and high build again. So we'll be back. I've started to block the high build and you should be able to see that there's a dark spot right here and I started to break through to filler right there. So that is when you stop as soon as you start to break through and the same thing happened right here. I'd started my dark spot started going away and as soon as it's almost was gone I had a breakthrough so I stopped now I've got one more to try and work out right here and work the edges and work up in these crevices you can see I got a real dark spot right there so I'll need to fill that I might be able to do that with my finger but for the most part down in here I'm just using a red scotch bright to knock all the rough edges off. And this is, this takes a lot of time in these little nooks and crannies, so uh, I'm just coming out here when I've got a spare, you know, hour or so to do this, so. This will probably take me a couple days off and on, just 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there. Uh, I tried to leave a sticker sticker residue on my cow and it started breaking through with the high build so instead of just piling high build on there to try and cover up the sticker residue it just had a little bit of a lip it's not it wasn't even residue it's just a lip so instead of trying to <coughs> cover it up with too many coats of high build i just knocked it all back down uh, there's a few little places that i missed Like that, which I'll go back and put a little glaze on. This piece has a little line right there, which I'll put some glaze on. And hopefully we'll get away with one more high build and then we'll be good. But we will have to see. Alrighty folks, we got the intake sealed up. It is ready for base clear. I'm not sure exactly what color I'm going to paint it yet because I'm going to wait till I get my accessory drive and see what, uh, like whether the accessory drive is matte black or, you know, more of a high gloss black. So once I have the accessory drive, I'll probably match this to that. Um, got my cow painted, base clear, turned out really well. So uh, that's a PPG. Our shop line base and clear so uh, we'll keep rolling I, I use the Aki spray gun on that too drop the tip size down to like a one three one four on the base on the base I shot a one four and on the clear I shot a one three so and that was just the uh, JC 60 clear so Turned out real nice, not very much orange peel at all. I mean, there's barely any orange peel in it and that'll easily wet sand out. So uh, if you're enjoying these, please make sure to like them. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe because it helps me to continue to do these videos and I appreciate it. So uh, stick around and we'll see you next time. Hopefully Holly will ship out my transmission cross member uh, this coming week. Today's Saturday, so uh, hopefully we can keep rolling. I seen something on the Facebook group that mentioned Vintage Air's got a three-month back order, which 
I'm not super pleased to hear that, but not surprised. So anyway, we'll keep rolling. 